I'm Salim Youssef. Um, I'm professor of cardiology at McMaster University and director of the Population Health Research Institute. I'm also the current president of the World Heart Federation. Over the last two decades, we've been accumulating a lot of new information. And what it shows is that secondary prevention, that is four simple drugs, aspirin, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and statins, can reduce cardiovascular disease recurrence by three quarters if they're taken. The second thing is we do know that adding to that a healthy diet, activity, and smoking cessation helps. And all of this together can prevent heart disease and de future deaths by 90%. That is huge. Yet, less than 50% of people in rich countries and less than 10% of people in poor countries receive these effective interventions. And I think there are three barriers. The first barrier is that in poor countries, the drugs are either unavailable or unaffordable. Second is our methods of secondary prevention are complicated. They involve patients coming back to clinics, which is expensive for them, they lose wages. And the hospital-based rehabilitation systems are not applicable worldwide. So both of these need to look at. And ultimately, if we can make the medications easy to use, available, accessible, affordable, and perhaps delivered by non-physicians, it will become less expensive, and I think will make a big impact on the health of people worldwide. The most important challenge is we don't have organized healthcare systems in order to deliver good secondary prevention. In the poorer countries, it also includes lack of availability and poor affordabilities. In the rich countries, it's one of many things people do. And in fact, cardiologists are not very good at following people long term. This has to be done in primary care. And one of the big challenges is adherence long term because a few years after a patient's had a heart attack or a stroke and they're stable, they don't feel the urgency in continuing to take these medicines. So we need to educate them. We need to create systems by which we can ensure adherence is high. And obviously, in the majority of the world that doesn't have universal health coverage, we need to ensure affordability. Well, the benefits to countries from secondary prevention is enormous. About 5 to 6% of the population have prevalent cardiovascular disease, either a previous stroke or a heart attack or angina or something like that. But yet, 20% of the events that occur in the future comes from that population. So it's almost a gain of 4 to 1. And so this is incredibly cost-effective. It also saves money by avoiding premature deaths when people are in their prime. It saves money by preventing rehospitalizations. It saves money by preventing expensive revascularization procedures. And secondary prevention is one of the most cost-effective strategies that we have today in chronic diseases. I think Cardiovascular disease is the biggest epidemic mankind has ever known. One in three people in the world will eventually have some form of cardiovascular disease. We can't deal with it just one person at a time. So we need to get all of society together. And once a patient has cardiovascular disease, clearly he or she is under medical care, but they need support at home to make sure their medicines are taken correctly. They need support at home to eat the right diets. They need support in their community so that perhaps we should have coronary clubs where patients come together, encourage each other to take their medicines. And if there are challenges they face, like lack of availability of the drugs in a local pharmacy, join together to lobby for it. So I think a group effort that involves physicians, nurses, patients, family members, and societies at large is the way we're going to beat this epidemic.